Hello everybody, we took a little break. I am back and not only am I back here making a video, we are back on Linux. Spent some time setting everything up and I do want to show you some of the applications and things that I have been using on a frequent basis. The reason I am back on Linux, I previously was for a couple months running on this uh, little M1 or M4 MacBook, God, M4 Mac Mini, that's what I've been using. Minisform sent over a computer to test out. It's not out yet, so I'm not gonna get into that. Do subscribe so you don't miss that video. But I did spend a couple hours here getting everything set up to its fullest. And what we're gonna do is run over some of the applications that I use every day, the desktop environment, some of the customizations and all that fun stuff. But first I would like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor and that is Skillshare. For me personally, I've been wanting to up my skills in 3D printing. This is a little project we're working on, which is going to be coming out in a future video. And I really truly learned a lot about 3D printing, some uh, 3D modeling and all that through the classes offered on Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions, or side hustles to the next level. And doing stuff like this really unleashes the kind of creativity that you could put into stuff like this, which is perfect because their focusing theme for this month is creativity as a practice. It's all about making the choice to learn, grow, and nurture a creative practice of your own. And with all that, the first 500 people who use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. So go down, click the link below, and get started today. So with all that, we are going to get back into this video going over some of, well, my current Linux setup. I would call this my first draft, all the stuff that I initially got set up and ready, and this will probably grow and change as time develops, so I may update it in the future. This application right here, obviously OBS, I'm not going to dive into that. It's very niche and specific, but it's something I personally use every single day. Now, we're going to start down here in the taskbar. We have a few different things going on here. The first thing that we're going to cover is the web browser that I'm using, and that is Zen. I covered this on the channel um, a couple months ago, and I've been using it off and on, and it is truly a wonderful web browser. If I head over to a website, just so it looks a little bit better on screen, this is techhut.tv. You can see it looks good, it renders pretty quick. This is basically a uh, Firefox skin per se, or a Firefox wrapper. This is Firefox running, and if you dive into the settings, you'll notice um, that it, it in fact is, but they do add some uh, extra things. One is if I go into look and feel here, you do have some options for this uh, side toolbar. So I'm currently using it with multiple. I like to have access to all the buttons and everything but I can collapse it all. If I go into a compact mode, I can completely hide all the toolbars. For example, right here, if I go compact mode, enable it, it will get rid of that. So then I just hover over and it will come out. And then I could also do the same thing if I do hide both. Now I just have this floating window of whatever website I happen to be on. Hover on over here, I could switch. And this is a pretty decent web browsing experience here. Additionally, if I undo this, so compact mode, let's disable it. Real quick, what extensions am I running? I only got three at the moment. We have the Bitwarden Password Manager. I have a self-hosted instance of Vault Warden, which is very nice for managing passwords and all that. And then some YouTube stuff, YouTube screenshot. I use this quite a bit for some of my own guides over here on a Tech Hut, for example. And then we have the return YouTube dislike, something I'd recommend everybody do. And I've just skimmed this browser. There's a ton more features. You could have workspaces. I haven't really been using that yet. I'm not utilizing this or really anything to its full potential. I just kind of use a couple features and everything, but th there is a lot of potential here. And with that, I'm gonna go over to something with a very similar icon and name. So that was the Zen browser. We're gonna go over here to Zed. Very similar to VS Code with uh, less features. It has like um, GPU rendering, which I type at like 30 words a minute. I'm never gonna notice that, but you might. The primary thing that I've been using this for, and it has been working really, really good, is for building out my Hugo site, which is the techhut.tv. I have a little project right here. I have Git set up. So in this little uh, terminal window down here, I could do uh, like Git init and it should already 
um, initialized, but you can see there. This is kind of how I manage and push and pull and do all that. This is just a markdown file. I have a separate video on Hugo. I've recently switched back to it. Do recommend you check out the site, but this is really nice. So like if I go content, I have everything all organized, super easily accessible so I could jump in here. If I click right here, I could get a preview of the markdown. Not the best preview window in the world, but it works. I'd prefer like kind of a split pane view, or even if I get a web browser kind of window right here so I can see the edits live if I had the like the uh, Hugo server running in the background. So if I do Hugo serve, boom, we're running. If I drop this in here, it's gonna look identical. It's the same website. But Hugo's super cool. It's been a lot of effort to convert it from WordPress to Hugo. Their website might still have some issues, but we'll see. Additionally here, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about it is I have a, a llama running in the background. Hello. Bye. But what's actually useful is if I go down here, for example, and you could see the assistant panel, this opens up a little kind of chat window here. You could see I have DeepSeek R1 selected. I also have a QWIN, never used it, somebody recommended it. Uh, let's switch to it just as an example. One thing I could do is if I go down here to add context, I can add some context. So let's say I want the file that's currently open in this tab. So I would just go like this. And then from there I could be like, so can you help me rewrite this fixing any grammar or spelling issues? So control enter, let that think about what it needs to do. It's a pretty large model, this is 14B, so uh, it might take it just a bit. So yeah, it's com completely rewriting it, putting it in proper markdown formatting. So you can see, for example, meanwhile, we have some new goodies to talk about. It replaced it, new features to talk about. It, it's just pretty cool. And like if I, uh, I could turn around and like ask it to help me write like a certain markdown reminders for certain syntax in markdown. I could drop in like a uh, chart layout and have it create me a chart with some data that I have. Really cool. So that is that, I would definitely highly recommend checking this out if you want something like VS Code, but a little lighter. There, there are extensions, if I go to extensions here, you can see there's not a lot compared to something like VS Code, but we have a whole bunch of different themes. We have various support for like PHP, HTML, basically syntax highlighting, lots of cool stuff. So let's close that out. Those are the two kind of big ones that I have been using uh, quite frequently. When I'm not in Zed and I need to open the terminal, I'm currently using Tabby. I did a separate video on this as well. Make this a little bit bigger. Is this the fastest terminal? No. Is it written in the best code? No. Is it pretty? Yes. I love it. I do. Oh, there's no tree. There we go. Tree. It works quick. It's nice. I love it. Again, it's very pretty. You can see up here, I'm currently in kind of just the default tab. What I really, really love about it is just the nice little profiles and connections here. I have one profile. This is my Raspberry Pi 5. This Pi 5 here is currently acting as my twin gate connector. If I go ahead and connect to it real quick, boom, we're in, we're good to go. Little Pi running Ubuntu. If I do a uh, Docker PS, you can see we have the twin gate connector in Cloudflare DNS. So that's updating my uh, public IP address onto Cloudflare for some uh, specific services that I'm using. If you're interested in that, I also have a whole separate video. Over here we have some options, reconnect. We can access uh, SFTP directly through here, which is super cool, probably one of my favorite features. So then I could go ahead and kind of browse the file system and actually see what is going on. So like if I go to open web UE, compose YAML, I can save it right here, and access it locally, fun stuff. If I go over here to settings, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So if we go appearance, I can make this, um... so this is more granular control. If I go color scheme, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, you could change it real easily. Change is basically automatic. Ah, overall, I, I love it. We have Cloud Sync here if that's something you're interested in. There are a variety of plugins. I don't use any plugins at the moment. Might be something worth looking into, but my shell and terminal use is not minimal, but I don't do it a lot all the time other than like updating configurations, installing packages, the typical stuff. Here we have SSH. So we have some settings in regards to that. We do have a vault, which will encrypt all your uh, SSH passwords, private keys, things like that. Probably should set that up. We have various window settings, and then you have access to your full configuration file. 
in which you can export it and save it and all that stuff. If you set up a whole bunch of like different key bindings, for example, uh, I, I love Tabby. Uh, I can't help myself. All right, closing all that out. Boop, boop, boop. Now, hear me out. I generally prefer to use like Plexamp or some other self-hosted service for my music library. It's what I do for my movies, TV shows, and all that. But, but, everybody in my house has an iPhone. And because of that, the one streaming service or subscription thing that I do pay for is Apple Garbage. It's like a package, Apple TV, which I never use, Apple Music for everybody. It works out, I terrorize my family enough with all the other self-hosted stuff that I'm doing. Paying for one service is the least I could do. And I like to take advantage of the things that I pay for, so I actually found this Cider. It is a beautiful Apple Music client if you happen to use Apple Music. This is something that is worth installing and checking out. It's slow as hell to start in most cases, but when it finally does, it is beautiful. Really beautiful layout. You can see some of the stuff I recently listened to. It's all from this playlist. I was just kind of going through what people are listening to, but it has all the same stuff that you'd expect in Apple Music and it is designed and just looks beautiful. Here's a more better representation of the music I actually listen to, if that is something you are curious about. But it supports everything. If I go listen now, for example, we have all the fun playlists and kind of radio stuff that they support. You could use this to browse, so some of the latest songs, you could see it is a little sluggish compared to self-hosted alternatives, which if you don't have Apple Music, if you don't have any services, that's good for you. Overall, it, it's Apple Music, but on a beautiful client that works on Linux. It, it, it's great. So those are the four kind of big applications that I use every day. If I go in here, we also have uh, Better Bird. I've been trying this out. I've, uh, there we go. I found an email folder without anything super critical in it. <laughs> I have been doing my absolute best to try to stray away from just using the web interface of whatever email service provider I happen to be using and trying to actually use a mail client. Overall, it's really nice. I've used Thunderbird in the past and just the UI, everything, it wasn't that great, but it has gotten a lot better. But there was a recent update a while ago that we did cover that really just cleaned up the application and made it nice. Here on their homepage, you can check out their feature table. This goes over just about everything, including multi-line views like Outlook, vertical tabs, account colors, attachments on top, just a bunch of little tiny kind of quality of life improvements that you get from using Betterbird. If you're a Thunderbird user, it might be worth checking out. There are a lot of features here and I'm gonna kind of go through them a little bit more in depth and try some of them out and see if it's actually worth it sticking with Betterbird, Betterbird versus Thunderbird, but, uh, Time will tell. So those are the big applications that I am using. I'm gonna quickly skim some more. Obviously you saw OBS Studio here. I do have a Telegram web or Telegram chat client right here. GIMP I use for all the thumbnails on the channel. It is a fantastic editor. It's what I'm used to. It's what I'll continue using. And from there we have FileZilla, which um, I've been using Tabby more for this feature specifically, but FileZilla does have way more features when it comes to actually doing these kinds of things. So I quickly connect it to that Pi and you could see a lot of the same stuff here. We have the Compose YAML. This is a lot easier to kind of move files uh, between various systems. Uh, it, it's a beautiful tool. LibreOffice is great, even though I end up spending most of my time in uh, Nextcloud. Anything that you don't really see in this video as far as an application, whether that be a RSS reader, a ebook reader, download clients, all that kind of stuff, I end up self-hosting, which I'm gonna be talking about in an updated uh, must-have uh, home lab, home server services video. So subscribe and that will be coming very soon. Steam, of course, do a little bit of gaming here and there. And that is really about it for things I actually use. We have some Steam stuff such as Goverlay, Lutris, Krita, jump into every once in a while, Blender, I'm trying to learn for uh, 3D modeling, so on and so forth. So now to the other stuff, the more kind of uh, Linux stuff that I'm running right here, right now. And you probably saw when I opened up Tabby, the operating system, is going to be Cache OS. Nobara, as of this very instant, is still my favorite Linux distribution out there. I highly recommend it. 
Uh, but I wanted to use something Arch, and I wanted to use, um, um, I was going to just install Endeavor OS, but I wanted to try something that does some stuff a little bit differently. We got the fish shell here by default, as well as a slightly modified kernel, which for this CPU, which you can see is rather new. It supposedly gives me a little bit better performance. I have yet to kind of test this out. It's something I do plan on doing, but we'll see. Of course, I'm running a KDE Plasma. Again, I'm just trying to do things a bit differently this time around. GNOME is generally my favorite, but I've had a pretty good experience in this so far. I talk crap about KDE Plasma, but it truly, truly is a fantastic desktop environment, despite its kind of minor graphical glitches here and there. And my screen went black twice while recording this, so I'm hoping that doesn't have any negative implications. But despite all that, it's really good, very, very highly customizable. You can see the dock is kind of this like floating pill on the bottom here which closely resembles to what I would do in GNOME or GNOME. And it's actually a default now, I just kind of squeezed it in a little bit, which is really easy to do. You just um, do show configuration panel. For the width, you can see I have it set to custom here. And then I just go ahead and move it around and life is good. So for the customization, what am I got? What do I got going on here? If we head down, head on down to colors and themes. There we are. We have Ant Dark. This one is great, it's beautiful. I love it. I don't have the full effect going on here, so if I open up uh, this, you can see not completely installed as it shows in the demo, but the color scheming is beautiful. In addition to that, I have, oh, there we go. Okay, so now I have the proper colors selected. <laughs> we have the application styles here set to breeze. Plasma style is also ant dark, window decorations, icons I do have the fluent gray dark ones which I do like better than a lot of the other options that I was going with. These ones are nice but I've noticed this fluent gray or the, just the fluent icon packs have way more icons. They don't have the Zen or Z, unfortunately. I can't really have these icons next to each other in the taskbar. It doesn't look that good, so I gotta have them separate. And we have a custom cursor here. And then the splash screen is going to be in dark with their login. And of course, over here you saw I have some widgets just to give me a little CPU usage overview. And that's basically it. That's it, that's what we got going on today. I have the Mac Mini right next to it. I'm still going to use that primarily for DaVinci Resolve. And depending on how good this recording turns out, I might end up uh, switching it over kind of as my capture card computer and having OBS on that. But we will see. Within OBS, uh, we still don't have full access to like uh, hardware transcoding with this uh, AMD chip which is a con, frankly, but I mean, my CPU is running at 6%, so it's not too bad. So yeah, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Anything that I mentioned in this video will be linked down below, so go ahead and check it out. And with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye. Oh, hey there, real quick, I almost forgot. I'm uh, here moving files and Nextcloud, it's the Nextcloud desktop thing, probably one of the greatest little things I have going on here. If I open it up, you could see it's an app on my desktop, which syncs with my Nextcloud. Um, yeah. <laughs>